Michael Garrett's Guitar Lessons here, and today I'm going to talk about situational open chords. That means depending on the key, I might prefer one fingering over another for the exact same chord. Now today I'm going to be going through the keys of C, G, and D, um, mainly because those are the ones that have the most benefits and also the most common keys. Now I will be using a little bit of music theory just to kind of help us along and keep things consistent throughout the keys. Now don't be scared. Um, all we're going to be doing is taking the key that we're in, for example, C, and then counting up six. Right? So C, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go C, D, E, F, G, A. So those are our numbers right there. And then my second, third, and sixth chords are always minor. That's it. Um, so we'll do the same thing for uh, G. So G is going to be uh, G, A, B, C, D, E. And again, my two, three, and six chords are minor. And then um, for D, same thing, the only thing we have to watch out for the C is that we have an F sharp. So it's going to be D, E, F sharp, um, G, A, B. All right. And again, my second, third, and six chords are minor. Okay. Now, um, now that we have that out of the way, that's going to make my the chord regressions between each of them a little bit simpler. And even those chord regressions that I was playing at the very beginning of the lesson, um, just a, that much easier to understand why I choose those chords. So let's begin with the key of C. So for my C chord, I'm going to play my standard version of C. Same thing with D minor and E minor, or my two or three chords. Now for my four chord, I'm going to be choosing to go to an F major seven. One is that uh, for beginners, that bar can be a little bit tough. And in going between my C and F chords, uh, not having to worry about moving my first finger right there is going to make it much easier. Now for my V chord, my G, I'm going to switch up the fingering quite a bit. I'm going to keep the same sort of spread between my third and second finger. So I'm going to be using my third finger on the sixth string, third fret, my second finger on the fifth string, um, uh, second fret, and my pinky on the first string, fourth fret. All right, now this is going to make going from C to G a lot easier as well because now I'm not going to have to kind of move my whole hand shape to kind of get going between those two chords. So I'm going to be doing this just to, again, just make it a little bit easier. And since they're common to see a C to G chord in the key of C, that uh, it just kind of helps things move along. A minor, again, my standard version as well. Then actually see the benefits, we need to get them out of the one, two, three, four, five, six order and actually put them into kind of chord progressions. So here we go. Let's go C, F, G, C. All right, and you can kind of see there that my fingers aren't moving quite as much. And going between that C to G is uh, quite a bit easier. All right, next let's put it into a, uh, a G, or I'm sorry, C, G, a minor, F, all right, so here's C, G, A minor, F, awesome, all right, and again, hopefully you could kind of see the, the, nice, the nice movements there and how I'm making things a little bit just easier and just a little bit smoother going between everything. Lastly, let's go to C, A minor, F, G. Awesome. Now let's take a look at the key of G. Now our six numbers in the key of G is going to be G, A minor, B minor, C, D, and E minor. All right. So we're going to have G. Now this G, I'm going to be playing just how I, uh, just kind of the standard way of playing G. My second finger is going to be on the sixth string, third fret. My first finger is going to be on the fifth string, second fret. And then my third finger and fourth finger are going to be on the third fret, on the second string and first string. All right, now I'm only going to be changing two other chords. All right, now for the C, I'm not only changing the fingering, I'm actually kind of substituting the chord with a C add nine. Now this is going to be the exact same fingering as our G, except I move my second and first finger down a string. So it means my second finger is now on the fifth string, my first finger is now on the fourth string. There's my C add nine. So if my first chord is either G or E minor, and I see a C chord, I could just play a C add nine. Now for my E minor, I'm going to be using my first and second fingers instead of kind of the standard way to play it, which is my second finger on the fifth string and my third finger on the fourth string. So move those two. Awesome. Now let's actually see those in action in some chord progressions. So let's try G, C, D, G. Here's G. Instead of a C at 9, or a C, I'm going to play a C at 9, then here's a D, and then G. One thing you're going to notice there is I didn't even move my third finger the entire time. With substituting that C chord, I kind of bypass that awkward transition from G to C right there. 
Let's try another one. How about G, D, E minor, C? G, D, E minor, C, or C at nine. Awesome, so E minor to C at nine is still tough, but I think it's a little bit easier using that this E minor as opposed to um, kind of our standard way. Awesome, let's try one more. Let's try G, E minor, C, and D. G, E minor, C, or C at nine, and then D. Awesome, so in the key of G, it's mainly C at nine, and then our first and second fingers for that E minor. Now the keys of C and G are perfect for things like this. Once we get to the key of D, there's really not too much that we can do, but uh, I still felt like there was enough that we could do that's worth going through. So, we in the key of D, we have D, E minor, F sharp minor, that's the only one we gotta watch out for, G, um, A, and then B minor. Okay, now this one, I find the best chords to be E minor using our first two. Uh, just like in the key of G again. Um, and for our five chord, the A chord, to use our first finger bar here instead of kind of three fingers on that A. All right, now the best, I think the reason is, is that when we go from a D to an A, my first, my first fingers doesn't have to move very much. And going between D and A in the key of D is pretty common. All right, another reason why is for A to B minor, again, my first finger is already kind of there. So it's kind of thinking a step ahead as opposed to, um, you know, always playing catch up and feeling kind of slow on these chord changes. All right, so those are really the only two chords, E minor and A. So let's try them in our chord progressions. First, I'm gonna try D, G, and A, and then D again. So we have D. I'm gonna be using the G from our key of G. A, first finger bar, D. Awesome. So again, I'm using that G kind of, uh, not like we did in the key of C, but in the key of G with all four fingers right there. Awesome, let's try another one. Let's try D, A, B minor, G. D, A, again with my first finger bar, B minor, notice how that first finger bar helps out that B minor, and then that G. Awesome. Next, I'm gonna have D, B minor, G, A. D, B minor, G, A, and then back to D again. Again, when we see that A to D right there, we can start seeing the benefits of that one. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to check out GarrettsGuitarLessons.com for more free lessons and resources, and even a free PDF tab of everything that we went through over today, along with backing tracks and play-alongs to help you practice. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys next time.